In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to begin working with data in Java, namely numbers and text. If you've been following along, go ahead and close our hello world.java file and we'll create a new one. Go over to the default package, right click, select new, and class. For this class, we're going to call it types and variables and go ahead and click finish. Now let's just go ahead and get our main method out of the way. If you remember how to do that, we type the word main, then press control plus spacebar, and hit enter. And there's our main method. So if we want to begin working with data in Java, we'll typically want to use a variable. And if we're going to create a variable, Java needs to know two things. First, it needs to know what kind of data is going to be stored. Is it going to be a number? Is it going to be some text? If it's a number, what kind of number is it? And second, it's going to need a name for the variable. So say we want to create a variable to store an integer. The way we would do that in Java, we would type int, and then following the type, we would type the name of our variable. We'll just call it my variable. And every Java statement must end with a semicolon. So we say int my variable and then a semicolon. Now right now my variable doesn't contain anything. Well, technically it contains zero. But if we wanted to set it to something, we could say my variable equals five. And now any time we use my variable, it will evaluate to the value 5. And we can see that by doing a system out, if you remember a shortcut, SYSO, control spacebar. And then in here we can say my variable. Now if we go ahead and run it, we'll see that 5 is printed out to the console. So to explain what's happening here, we could put in a comment. And what we're doing here is we are declaring a variable called my variable that stores the type int or integers. And on this line, we are initializing my variable to the value 5. Now we can change the contents of my variable anytime we want. Let's go down after our system out and say my variable equals 10. And then again, let's do the system out.print line. I'm just going to copy mine and paste it below. And now we run it. We'll see that 5 is printed out first, corresponding to this first printout. Then my variable is set to 10, and we print it out again, and we get 10. Now we can also do something that might confuse you a little bit. What happens if we say my variable equals my variable plus 1? And then again, do the system out. Now conceptually what's happening here? My variable is going to have the value of 10. We're saying 10 equals 10 plus 1, which is 11. And that doesn't make any sense. Well, let's see what happens when we run it. And it prints out 11. So this is one of the confusing aspects of programming. You can't think of this as a mathematical statement. What's happening here is the right side is being evaluated, and then what that evaluates to is being assigned to my variable. So the way this runs is my variable, which evaluates 10, plus 1, which evaluates to 11, is assigned to my variable and then we print out my variable and 11 gets printed out. Now I'm going to delete some of our code here and create another variable. 
and we'll make it an integer again. We'll say int my var two, and this time we're going to both declare it and initialize it on the same line. So the way we do that is just say int my var two equals mm, say seven and a semicolon. Uh, all this is doing is it's doing both steps here on the same line, which is a convenience. So now we could say something like, we'll do a syso again, control spacebar, we'll say my variable plus my var2. And what happens if we run that? You'll see that 12 is printed out to the console. So what's happening here? We get to the system.out.print line, it sees the parentheses to figure out what it wants to print out, and it first evaluates this. So my variable gets replaced with a 5, and my var2 gets replaced with a 7. It then does 5 plus 7, which equals 12, and that's what gets printed out. So let's put a comment on that line for my var2, saying that we're declaring and initializing in one step. Now there are other types of numbers that we can work with. When we declare something to be of type int, it can only hold integers. It can't hold any number with a fractional value. And the reason for that is because computers store ints and numbers with fractional values differently in memory. So the type we have to use if we want a fractional value is called double. So we type the word double and say, let's just call it x for simplicity. And we can say it equals 2.5. Now we have a variable called x that refers to a double or a floating point number or a, a number with a fractional value. And just to show you that everything works, we'll change that to x in the system out and run it. And we'll see that 2.5 is printed to the console. Now what do you suppose happens if we were to say my variable equals x? Well, you can probably already tell that something's wrong because Eclipse underlines it with a little red squiggly line and you get this red x here. And it says, type mismatch cannot convert from double to int. What that means is Java is preventing you from putting this value, 2.5, into this variable, which is an integer, because you would lose precision. You would lose the 0.5 part of the number. So you can't do that. But you can do it the other way around. You could say x equals my variable. And that's just fine. And the reason for this is because a double can hold integers. And that makes sense if we think about it. And let me, let me show you how it works. If we were to run it and see what it prints out, we'll see that it prints out 5.0. Now before, when it was just an integer, it printed out 5. But because we're assigning it to a variable of type double, which contains fractional values, it adds on that point zero. So that gives you some idea of how to work with numbers. If you don't feel like you totally get it, don't worry about it. We'll do a lot of this as we continue on throughout the tutorials. Now I'd like to show you how we work with text. So let's delete some of this. I'll leave our numbers declared up here with the comments. If you remember in the last tutorial when we said hello world, we put it in quotes like this. We type it out here. We say hello world. Now what this is referred to is a string or a string of characters. And if we wanted to create a variable to hold that, we would have to declare it to be of type string. So we type string and we'll call it hello equals hello world. So how this works is we have a string on the right side. In other words, text between some quotation marks. And that string 
is assigned to a variable called hello that is of type string. This might be a good thing to mention here. If you hover over a type or a variable or lots of different things in Java, you might get a pop-up window here and it gives you some information about it. It says the string class represents character strings. All string literals in Java programs, such as ABC, are implemented as instances of this class. Now, you don't have to understand every little detail of that, but just understand that we have a variable called hello, and it contains the string hello world. So now, if we do another print line, if you remember our shortcut, we can now pass in, instead of hello world in quotes, we can pass in hello. And now if we run that, we'll see that hello world is still printed out. Now let's change this up a bit. Instead of saying hello world, let's take the world out of the string. So now it just says hello comma space. Now let's create a second variable of type string. We'll call it name equals Charlie. Now let's say we want our console to say hello Charlie. How would we do that by referring to the variables? Well, if we run it right now, it says hello. So one way we can do it is to do another system out that print line and put a name. And now if we run it, it says hello, and then a new line, and Charlie. But that's not quite what we want. Let's say we want them on the same line. So what we can actually do is say hello plus name. And we can delete this last one. And we run this. We'll see hello Charlie is on the same line. What this is called is string concatenation. And I'll put a comment in there. String concatenation. Basically what that means is take the value of hello and append it to the value of name. So in the end we get one string that says hello Charlie. Now I think this is enough to give you a basic idea of how variables and types work. And don't worry we'll be using them quite a lot the key bits of information to get out of this tutorial are declaring variables, initializing variables, and then using a variable by its name. So if you understand that much, you're good to go. In the next tutorial, we'll learn how to create our own methods. Thanks for watching.